Okay, so next I want to do about intermolecular forces at high grade between um, in and between molecules, okay? Um, these are created within them and between them, okay? So you got, this is solid, this is what a liquid is, this is what a gas is at basic Nat 5, Nat 4 level, okay? Uh, molecules are very highly spaced apart in gas. All the atoms are, molecules are much closer together in liquid and interact. And in solid, they're all basically joined together, okay? In gas, they hardly ever interact. In liquid, they interact quite a lot. In solid, they're all joined together. Um, so, the... Okay. Sodium, I mentioned I think in another video that sodium exists as a metallic lattice, okay? Um, which is which is solid at room temperature, which is two nine eight Kelvin, okay? Because um, this is the reason it solved the room temperature is because the temperature um, is not high enough to break the strong strong metallic bonds. Okay. Um, if temperature is increased, the sodium melts as some of the metallic bonds break, so the liquid sodium is formed, okay? So, as temperature increases, um, the, some, the, some, of the metallic, some of the metallic bonds break, break, okay? And um, so the, the sodium liquefies. Okay, that's clear. Right. So. So the melting point is a measure. Of how strong of how strong metallic bonds are, okay. Um, and how strong the met metallic bonds between the ions are, okay? Because remember they're made of that iron, so it's a measure of how strong the bonding between the ions is, okay? <clears throat> so therefore, you can um, you can predict that iron, or school Fe, has um, stronger strong meta stronger metallic bonds than than sodium because its melting point is much higher, okay? Iron's melting point is much higher than sodium, so it is much stronger metallic bond, okay? Um, for non-metals, for non-metals, non <clears throat> example, argon, uh, Argon is AR, periodic table, iron's there, this is argon. Um, did I mention diamond before? I think I forgot to quickly show you. This is the diamond structure, okay? I didn't show you that before. Um, it's our carbon atoms surrounded by four other carbon atoms in a tetrahedral, so you've got carbon at the center, four other than the tetrahedral, and then each each next carbon atom also has a tetrahedron, carbon's around it, okay? Carbon, tetrahedron, 
that carbon is also as a tetrahedron, okay? This carbon is a tetrahedron, so the whole thing as a tetrahedron, so the whole thing extends outwards in all directions. This is basically dynamo structure, okay? It's a little sample of it, okay? I forgot to show you that a minute ago. Um, in the previous video, I forgot to show you, I think. Okay. So back to non-metals. Um, argon is very... It's very unreactive, okay? Hard to form ionic and, 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 and covalent bonds, okay? It's, di it's difficulty. All these um, noble gases, helium, neon, all have difficulty forming ionic and covalent bonds. But if you cool, Argon liquid forms. Okay, and then solid. Liquid forms and then solid. What so what holds argon atoms in liquid? Or, or solar states. So when you cool argon or helium and neon, they mention they form, or krypton, they form liquids and then solid. What holds the atoms in the solar state, the liquid state? Um, the answer is something called London's dispersion forces, okay? London dispersion. Okay. Um, these are part of the Van der Waals forces. Um, these are one of three Van. And both forces, okay. So, London's dispersion forces. It's okay to write abbreviations like this, as long as you state London's dispersion forces and put in brackets LDF, okay. But you mustn't ever just write this. You must always write the whole name out and then put in brackets the initials, okay. So London's dispersion forces, okay. Um, these are a, a very weak, okay. Maybe I should mention the three others are actually called, you got London's dispersion forces, you got hydrogen bonding, okay, and you got permanent dipole, permanent dipole, okay. So London's dispersion forces are very weak, okay, um, and they operate. Operate between atoms and molecules. Okay. Um, for example, argon or C that's propane. I'll come to in the later lecture. Okay, so you got they operate between alkanes and Nobel gases. Okay, and other atoms and molecules. Okay. Um, so the forces cause, they're caused by the uneven 
electron distribution distribution okay around atoms okay around an atom's nucleus okay so London's dispersion of course but the uneven distribution of electrons around an atom's nucleus so it's easier if I draw kind of a diagram so you understand that you got um okay um or you can have okay so you get an instantaneous because the electrons are all moving around the atoms around yeah around the nucleus you get instantaneous dipoles forming okay so when you have argon you get basically the electrons flicker the electrons flicker into arrangement so all the electrons briefly will flick around to one side so you get much more positive there negative side and a positive side okay and it becomes polarized okay you get instantaneous dipoles okay this can influence um, I'm drawing molecules as circles to make it simplified diagrammatic this can influence the polarized It, it polarizes other molecules, okay? I should say polarizes other molecules. So the instantaneous flickering, instantaneous dipoles influences other molecules and that will then form this, okay? So this thing will then become like that, okay? So this is London's dispersion forces. Um, clear. Um, make sure that's clear for you. So yeah, you get uneven distribution of electrons around the nucleus, you get instantaneous dipoles forming, um, the electrons flicker around and form a positive a molecule that's polarized, one side is positive, one side is negative, one end is positive, one end is negative, and this can polarize other molecules, okay? atoms as in argon okay so um, so so the argon atoms attract they attract each other okay so you get argon plus negative okay I'm not drawing them as sphere as I ought to be really so so this is just very but it's just the diagrammatic but it's illustrating to you what happens okay so it should be negative okay so um they attract each other so when you when you cool them you take away the thermal kinetic energy and the atoms the electrons flicker and form these instantaneous dipoles and the atoms aggregate together and form liquids and solids, okay? London's dispersion forces are weaker than ionic, okay? And covalent and weaker than metallic, okay? But they're strong enough so that these noble gases will turn to liquid and solid. Okay, as I said, the if you cool you you remove thermal kinetic 
energy, okay? So, so liquid and solid form. Okay. Um, helium has the weakest. London's dispersion forces, okay? Its freezing point is minus two seven three degrees centigrade, okay? So the as you go down the group, so as you go down the group here, the Lumbus dispersion forces increase, okay? Um, because there's more and more electrons around the atoms. There's more and more electrons circulating, moving around them. So the forces of the ele this flickering, this instantaneous dipole, the forces of it gets bigger and bigger. Okay. For example, argon has 36 electrons, helium only has two. So the, the London's dispersion forces in this are much stronger than that, or, or, or xenon is much stronger than helium, which is 54 electrons. Okay. Um, so I will just, um, excuse me, right, a little bit more to do on the next sorts. So hydrogen bonding next. Okay, so that's the next type of Van der Waals force, force, okay. So this occurs between hydrogen bonding to oxygen or nitrogen or chlorine or fluorine, any of the electronegative atoms on the right hand side of the periodic table. Um, or, or very electronegative. I'll write it as electro Okay, these are electronegative. So most commonly and famously, you get it between Okay, so you got, because the, the electronegative, because of the electronegativity of the atoms, the electrons are pulled away from the hydrogen. So that becomes a bit positive, slight positive charge. This becomes slightly negative. And that becomes slightly positive. And again, oxygen being more electronegative pulls the electrons away. So it becomes slightly negative. And this becomes slightly positively charged, slightly positive, slightly positive. So these are, these are the hydrogen bonding, okay? So this is um which are weak, okay? So that's famous example of hydrogen bonding in water, okay? You should know this for your higher exams, okay? You should draw this out. Um, okay, so um Another example is ammonia, um, H2O and hydrogen F, okay? So again, ammonia is uh, okay, so these It's the same idea as in the water, okay? I don't need to really draw this out, but it's the same idea. 
fluorescent hydrogen bonding between them. These are these bonds are not hydrogen bonds. This is a hydrogen bond, okay? These are molecules that I should maybe draw it make it clear. These are the bonds going away, okay? Right, again that's going away. Okay. Okay, that's clearer. So that's basically hydrogen bonding in ammonia. Um, next example I mentioned was permanent dipole. Permanent dipole. Okay, permanent dipole. Which you write as permanent dipole, permanent dipole, okay. So these are um, uh, these are much stronger than London's dispersion forces, okay? They're the weakest. Okay? So, the actual order is Covalent bonds are stronger than hydrogen bonds, which are stronger than permanent dipole, permanent dipole, which are greater than London's dispersion forces, okay? That's the order of strength. Covalent, stronger than hydrogen bonding, stronger than permanent dipole, permanent dipole, stronger than London's dispersion forces, okay? Um, hydrogen bonding, is reason water has a very high boiling point, okay? Other, for the size of molecule, normally very small molecules have much lower boiling points and big molecules have much higher boiling points, okay? So the small molecule H2O or you got um, CH4, okay? Low, this should be low boiling point. Okay? That's H2O, high boiling point, okay? Another molecule, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is an alkane, okay? I'm not gonna... This is a very high boiling point. Bigger molecules are high boiling point, smaller molecules are low, low boiling point, but water is the old one out, okay? So all these other molecules like CH4, hydrogen fluoride, NH3, um, H2S, HCl, PH3, uh, H, B, R, S, I, H, 4. These all have low boiling points with the small, okay? But water, because of hydrogen bonding, is a much higher boiling point. It's unusually high, okay? And it's because of hydrogen bonding. So I think if you drew a graph, you find water up here, and you sort of all the other ones are like, um, Okay, so that's temperature, okay? So, um, I was mentioning, that's just a quick mention of the hydrogen bond. I was talking about permanent dipole, permanent dipole before. So, okay, so this occurs between things like HCl, where you get hydrogen chlorine and you get negative 